Hi, Year 11. I'm going to be talking through The Character of a Happy Life by Sir Henry Wotton. And this poem is um, a poem of, of advice of how to live a happy life that is free from uh, materialism and free from caring about um, other people's thoughts um, and judgments and instead focusing on personal and inner happiness. So this poem is is a relatively simple poem, um, but that actually makes it a little harder to talk about in an exam because there's less alternative meanings to speak about. But I'll show you a few things that you can pick up on to analyse um, in depth. So the first stanza begins, how happy is he born and taught that serveth not another's will, whose armour is his honest thought and simple truth his utmost skill. So we begin um, with the ambiguous um, he and we can assume that this is talking about um, all of humanity, all of man um, and this is a, a rather kind of a general message of advice um, to all that read this and, and um, just to make sure uh, you know this poem is written in the 17th century um, although many of the messages um, are actually quite modern, talking about materialism um, and, and, and forgetting, um, or at least not having to think about your own reputation, um, because that doesn't bring happiness. So the first line, how happy is he born and taught that serveth not another's will? So the syntax of this poem is quite confusing because... Um, the first line begins almost as if it's a question, how happy is he born and taught? And when we get into the second line, um, we realise that actually it's not a question, it's a statement, how happy is he that is born and taught um, to serve not another's will. So we've got the slightly archaic um, term there for serve. So a man is happy when he's born and taught not to serve anybody else not to serve anybody others will so we have the beginning idea um, of independence which runs through um, this entire poem and kind of again it's all about personal happiness rather than um, trying to make other people happy whose armour is his honest thought and simple truth is his utmost skill so uh, we have the metaphor here, the first um, te uh, literary technique really that you can zoom in on and go slightly more in depth than in this poem. So armour is obviously a metaphor for human protection. So honest thought um, protects you um, from others, protects you from kind of the negativity of others. And if you are honest, if you have honest thought and you are, have simple truth, that is both your armour and your skill. And so we begin um, the poem with a clear um, message from our poet that this is the way to live, to be honest and to be true. And the second stanza um, moves on slightly and, and reads, whose passion, whose passions not his masters are. So again, we have um, a confusing syntax here whose passions not his masters are, so his pas whose passions um, should not be his masters. Um, we can read that, read that in a more modern way. Um, so passions should not be leading you. They should not be masters, and obviously there's a little bit of word analysis here, um, masters suggesting kind of uh, those that overpower you. Um, and actually your passions should not be uh, the things that lead you and overcome you, which is an interesting uh, piece of advice, uh, perhaps not to be too passionate about things. Whose soul is still prepared for death. Okay, so we have here um, the lexical field of perhaps religion and afterlife. Um, and that's perhaps the first reference we have in this poem to a slightly more religious meaning here. Whose soul is still prepared for death, e.g. someone who has not sinned, someone who is ready for um, the next life or for heaven. Untied unto the world by care. So your soul is still prepared for death if you are untied 
and that's an interesting verb there because to be untied suggests that at one point you were tied um, to a world of care and as the last line says of public fame so it suggests that you have to you're not born uh, without this you are born tied to caring about reputation and actually the the way to prepare yourself for death is to untie yourself um, unto the world by care of public fame uh, so the enjambment there um, makes that like the third line make more sense untied into the world by care of public fame or private breath so to find true happiness you must untie yourself from caring about public fame and so uh, public fame we can assume is kind of your re your personal reputation now private breath is a slightly more um ambiguous image or, or metaphor there and perhaps private breath um means uh, kind of the private whisperings or the private thoughts of other people and what they say about you so public fame fame or private breath or, or what people say to you in private as well so we have the public versus private um, kind of juxtaposition here and ultimately what our poet is saying is that you should not care what people think about you in public or what people think about you in private and if you can take away um, your ability to care about those things you will be prepared for death. Or, or at least prepared to go to heaven. And the third stanza uh, begins in a similar way. Who envies none that chance doth raise. So that means um, that you aren't to envy or to be jealous of those where chance, we can assume that means those that are born into status or money or something of privilege. Um, you shouldn't envy or be jealous of those nor should you have vice immorality um who never understand understood how deepest wounds are given by praise so we have a slightly quicker list here of all the things that you should not be and we've got the negative none and never so do not be jealous uh do not uh, find any any vices any immoralities um, and do not give in to praise. Again, quite an interesting bit of advice here. Um, similar to, to the passions not being your masters. Praise is seen to be negative here. Don't give in to it. Um, and actually it can cause deepest wounds. So praise can cause pain. Nor rules of state, but rules of good. So instead of following um, the rules of state, and. Um, perhaps that is kind of I don't know the governing state here is this more about politics so not to follow that but to follow whatever good is and maybe that's actually a reference to religion maybe there's kind of a, a contrast in here between the rules of religion and being good and the rules of the state um, which are in our poet's eyes perhaps not good and the fourth line who hath his line from rumours freed, whose conscience is his strong retreat. So again, a similar um, line to public fame of private breath in the second stanza. Now we have um, someone who must free themselves from rumours. So not just worrying about what people think of them and their reputation, but also any other rumours of, of other people. And so again, the suggestion that you must be independent in your own uh, thoughts. And if your conscience is your strong retreat, so relying on your own kind of ability to judge um, and think for yourself, so relying on yourself. There's lots here to do with being um, an individual and having individual thoughts. Whose state can neither flatterers feed so that um, suggests that those that give these kind of painful um, words of praise, those that um, make you famous or talk about you in private, you should not give them anything to feed on. Um, and obviously there's a little bit of language analysis there. 
um, with feeding and flatterers. Um, nor ruin make oppress oppressors great. Okay, so um, perhaps this is saying that um, oppressors should not be made great by their ruins, by the damage that they do. Therefore, nor ruin can make oppressors great. So bad things should not make people in power great. So it's definitely seeming to be um, a theme of, of, of perhaps politics here, or at least those um, in charge, those that lead and are in power and not necessarily the ones to look up to. Who God doth late and early pray more of his grace than gifts to lend. So here we have the first reference to God, um, the first explicit reference to religion um who god does late so perhaps um a late um oncoming of faith and early pray more of his grace than gifts to lend so um someone will be happy the character of a of a happy person will be uh, someone who gives more to the grace of god gives more to religion and uh, their own faith than gifts and material worth. Um, so even though this is a poem written in the um, 17th century, it's still very much um, appropriate for the modern day, um, particularly about uh, material worth and, and people's opinions. And entertain, entertains the harmless day with a religious book or friend. So here, this line ends instead with um, the suggestion that you should be able to entertain yourself with something simple, like a religious book or a friend, conversation with a friend, rather than, uh, I guess, the flatterers and the gifts and the rumours um, and the, the deep, uh, deeply wounded praise that is given. So there's a sense that the, the simplest um, things in life bring happiness. And then the final stanza um, changes its tone slightly and we turn to this man from the more ambiguous who and he to this man. This man is freed from servile bands. Okay, so we have another metaphor here of um, imprisonment indeed escaping imprisonment um, so when you do all of these things when you follow the advice of this poem you are free um, of hope to rise or fear to fall so you are you are you are freed from the bands of hope the things that um, kind of keep you imprisoned where you are constantly hoping whether you rise or fearing whether to fall so once you get over this idea that um, you should be becoming something more or, or raising your status or searching for something higher than what you have already or you're spending your life fearing that you're going to lose the things that you have if you're able to get over those two hopes and fears you are then free lord of himself though not of lands so again another interesting um idea here about kind of personal freedom and personal kind of joy and happiness rather than lands and again we can assume kind of material worth here so look to lord of himself not lord of the lands and having nothing yet hath all so those that seemingly have nothing no material worth perhaps just a simple uh, book, religious book or friend and, and those that live kind of simple, um, a simple life which focuses solely on themselves and their personal well-being, they will actually in turn have it all, they will have everything. Okay, so that's just a very brief overview um, of the uh, meaning of this poem but I'm sure you can find lots of other techniques here that you could zoom in on um, and develop further and perhaps as I was uh, speaking you were thinking that there were different meanings and remember that's the best thing that you can find uh, for your GCSE essay is the different alternative meanings that you can explore in an essay.
just very quickly uh, we'll go through the uh, structure as well so now that we understand that this whole poem is about the simplicity um, of life and therefore the simplicity of happiness there's quite a nice and clear link between how our poet structures this poem and how that symbolizes the meaning of this poem so here we have uh, six uh, quatrains so six stanzas with four lines and um, so it's a very regular poem and we also have the nice and simple a b a b rhyme scheme that uh, moves throughout this poem um, so that is as simple as a poem structure gets um, and clearly the simplicity of the structure symbolizes the simplicity of uh, the life that our poet is advising that people should have and just a simple reference like that to structure is enough um, but obviously you might uh, zoom in also on uh, whether there's an enjambment and whether you can link that to any meanings, whether there's any caesura. I'm just scanning through and I don't think there is. Um, again, or maybe there's a little bit at the end here, um, but maybe the lack of uh, caesura, and that's punctuation in the middle of a line that, that breaks and disrupts um, the flow of a poem. I've just spotted a few more there. Um, but perhaps that suggests the kind of the joyful flow of life that he is advising that uh, everyone should follow. Okay, thank you, year 11.